Hey guys, welcome back to the layout once again and welcome to another layout update. Um, if you guys have been in the loop, you would have seen that uh, the past couple of weeks I have been doing a, a live stream and I'm going to do that every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So there will be another live stream um, in just a couple days here. So uh, be sure to, to tune in if you're interested. We typically just, well I say typically as if I've done this forever. It's really only been a couple of times, but um, the last you know, the, the first couple of times I have uh, just run some trains. Um, this time we might look at, uh, we'll, we'll probably run some trains as well, but I'm, someone had asked if I could uh, explain how I do the paper uh, scenery substructure, um, and I'll talk about this in a second in this video, but we might do a little like tutorial um, live session on, on how I do that. So uh, anyway, I don't want to drag on too long here because we do have a few things to talk about. So let me head down over here. Um, you'll probably notice I have a bit more scenery in. Um, this is a bit more than last time. And unwisely, I parked a train there. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, I, I don't remember what all was in here from the last layout update. Um, I'm not sure if I had the grass, but uh, what I've done here, I'll just explain it anyway, is uh, from the road this way, I have pretty much all the dirt in up to the corner there-ish. And then uh, I haven't done all the grass yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. So you'll see I have grass on this little hill here. You'll also notice that uh, I made these little rock cuts um, textured as close to prototype photos as I could. And uh, one thing that is not apparent yet is the texture down in this area um, is, is much more irregular on these shallow, they're almost more like shelves, they're not really like rock cuts. But as we get uh, up the hill and we start to see some bigger cuts like right here, um, these will have more of a, a pattern striation to them. So you can't see that right now, but someday, soon, hopefully, um, I'll be able to talk more about that. You'll also see that I have um, some stray ballast that I've put on the access roads there, and it sort of fades out as it goes that way, and it'll be sort of patchy. So some areas will have more stray ballast, um, others less. Um, and the one thing I haven't done yet is the actual ballast, as you'll notice. And uh, then as we move down into the corner here, you'll see I've been doing some grass, which has turned out pretty good. I tried to make it a little uneven so it wasn't too uniform. Um, what I haven't done yet and I need to do is uh, add some grass tuff, sort of like what you see here, but like along the face of the rocks. Um, usually there's like a, a tiny tuft or two here and there. So I, I need to do that with some shorter grass fibers. And you'll see I've continued the access road this way. Um, it's textured a little bit, so you can see those those tire tracks there. Hopefully you can see that. And I really like the the dirt texture, how that came out. So that's looking good. And then uh, what you'll also notice are these trees here that I've done. Now, these are really simple. There's about 10 pieces right in there. And uh, all together, it probably took me 15-20 minutes to do it. Um, I'm using Scenic Express Super Trees. That's like the main tree structure. And those are sitting down there in the immense mess that I've created in the layout room. So uh, please forgive me. I've been doing a bit of work. And then uh, the leaves are also Scenic Express products. Um, this is the super leaf material. I'm using a mixture. Um, I, I try to vary it on each of the trees slash bushes there. And I'm using uh, medium green, dark green, and olive green. And then you'll see I have two bushes here. There's one there and then one here, which is probably hard to tell on the video, but they're slightly different than the trees. Um, they're much more uniform and smoothed out, and I, I did, did it very much the same way that I did the larger trees, except I pulled a bit of polyfiber around the structure there, so that sort of smooths it out and makes it look more bush-like, if you will. Um, so then moving this way, you'll see I picked up uh, Scale Train's new Dash 9, so this is really exciting. Um, like two weeks ago I had no idea that scale trains would be making these and now I have one so um, this one has sound we'll come back to this in a second I'll fire it up so we can briefly listen to it and then also keep in mind that I will be doing a full review on that um, here very soon uh, so that's exciting details fantastic I've also been doing a bit of weathering uh, you'll see I just finished up this BLMA boxcar here. So this is for sale on my eBay page. Be sure to uh, check that out. I put the link down in the description below. Um, so that turned out pretty good, I think. And there's a bit of graffiti on the other side as well. And then I also did a bit of light weathering on this Walther's 
um, mainline two bay hopper here. So pretty simple stuff, but I sort of darkened the the seams on the panels, um, did the trucks, and did a bit of a splatter down on the bins there. So that's looking pretty good, also for sale. And then uh, the other thing I have for sale here is this Scale Trains um, Gunderson grain hopper here. So you can see over here is what they look like straight from the factory. This is with a bit of weathering. This is just sort of a quick and easy weathering technique. Um, I did some oil paints to, to sort of darken the seams. Um, I tried to just sort of, you know, uh, paint this one like some prototype photos I, I saw. It wasn't exactly this road number, but I just sort of tried to, to pick a look that was somewhere in the middle or the average of a bunch of these grain cars. Um, and then uh, the, the fade is sort of like a light pinkish brown, uh, sort of a white color. I airbrushed that on. And then the underbody I did with sort of a blackish brown color. Um, I got the uh, wheel spray on the end bins there, modeled fairly accurately, I think. So um, anyway, this one is for sale on eBay as well. And this is an auction, so this will be ending in a few days. So check that out if you're interested. Again, uh, links for all three of those are in the description. Um, and then moving this way, nothing really along that back wall. Um, still looks super messy. Um, I guess we'll check this out first. Um, this looks kind of stupid right now because I don't have paper over it, but this is really the, the beginning of how I do my paper substructure scenery. Um, you'll see I'm putting in a, sort of a small little rock cut there, just like at the actual breezy point um, along Crawford Hill. And then you'll see we're going to have some pretty um, substantial hill structures over here. And I thought it would be cool as well to do a little country road here that uh, you'll see crosses the tracks down there and goes off into the imaginary expanse. Uh, it comes up this way and then sort of zigzags up. Uh, up the mountain and that where it meets the backdrop there is about uh, seven or eight inches off of uh, track height so there's quite a bit of climb in there um, it's it's kind of difficult to see how it'll look right now but imagine this all draped in some oh oh boy <laughs> imagine this all draped in some paper so hopefully the crew members are okay um, and then over here you'll see that's about how high I'm gonna have it to uh, to cover what will be the tunnel portal. I'm thinking about putting the portal about here. It's a really short tunnel, um, which means that I'll really have to do a pretty good job of putting the tunnel liner inside to make that look realistic. Um, but I don't want to have it too close to the backdrop so that we can't have any rock formations along the backdrop. So it's out a few inches, but I didn't want to bring it too close to this track because they sort of diverge. So what I'll be doing here, and there isn't really an actual spot like this at Crawford where the tracks are super close, there is an old tunnel, it's Belmont Tunnel, so that's what I'm modeling there, um, but the way this track sort of swings off close to this tunnel portal, very similar to the other side, um, I'm going to try to execute this sort of like Tunnel 10 at Tehachapi where they, uh, they sort of almost daylighted, they didn't daylight it, but they excavated this next to the tunnel to add a second track, so that's what I'll try to model in there. So if you can imagine, that's the profile along the backdrop, but still need to add the meat of that hill. And then if I turn around here, you'll see I'm adding the tiny little third terrace or third tier to these hills. Um, over here, you can see the profile of that little mound. It's, it's nothing substantial, but if you can imagine, if the scene continued that way, it would sort of slope up there. And then over here, this is sort of a, a more complete section of that scenery substructure. And what I'm trying to model here is the abandoned section of track or like the original mainline alignment would have gone there and sort of swept this way and then met up. You can see where that like that dark pencil is. That's where I'm imagining the original mainline was. And there are a couple places along Crawford Hill where you can see where the original mainline track alignment was before they sort of moved things around. So this will be obviously the new and current track arrangement. And uh, this originally would have been just a big hill that they cut out of and that was the original cut. So that'll be kind of an interesting scene. And I figured if I had uh, a hill in the foreground and then something in the background, that would give this little corner uh, quite a bit of depth. Um, so that was my thinking there. And then finally, over here, we have uh, this little hill extension. Um, someone had mentioned that it seemed a little too low, and I agreed. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit more so that we can 
you know, provide a little more justification for our tunnel there. Now, additionally, I did a bit of work in the staging room here, and excuse the mess, it looks kind of janky. And I, uh, I have to assure you that on video, I think this room just looks so much worse. <laughs> and I, I just mean in person, it, it looks like we have all this like house equipment in here, and I'm like blocking off the water heater or whatever. I assure you, that's a separate room. You know, we still have uh, the insulation all exposed and all that crap, but um, this this is coming together, um, it's thought out, I assure you. Uh, but what I have been doing is putting on the little guards there along the curve so that no trains fall off the tracks. And in addition to that, I put up um, our, what I thought was going to be temporary, but you know, you always put something in as sort of a quick fix and that's how it stays. For odds, So odds are that uh, this crappy old drywall that I put up here, it's not really crappy, I mean it's good stuff, that's why I put it up here. But um, that is just probably going to stay up here. Uh, so anyway, all that is to say that I do have a couple tracks running back here to the staging area. Um, this is not complete yet. I still need to continue the bench work uh, back into here, of course, being careful of cutoff valves and stuff like that. Um, and I really only have two tracks, but the reason for that is is that I wanted to be able to... Oh, let's let the color adjust there. Um, I wanted to be able to run trains up the top of the hill at Belmont. So off to the right, that's Crawford, right? We have our helper pocket there with our locomotives. Trains start moving upgrade that way, and eventually they wind up up here. Um, but until recently, I didn't really have tracks much beyond the tunnel portal there. But now I can run trains up so that at least the rear of the train um, can get up past the crest here, meaning that we can cut off our helpers and send them down grade. So even with my limited uh, storage space up here, I can have a little fun with operations, and we'll hopefully see a little bit of that very soon in some uh, cool layout rail fanning videos. So here's the scale trains dash nine. Um, I do realize it's quite loud. I still need to do some some programming, um, but really quick, uh, we'll look at the details. You can just kind of look for yourself. Uh, the things worth noting are there are step, or sorry, walkway lights. So there's one on the front there, also one on the rear, same place. And then they've also got a light here for the steps on the side of the locomotive. And then just like on their tier four models, the uh, the grills back here are see-through, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, it's a great model. It looks looks fantastic. Runs quite well. Very heavy, good polar, and the lights are good too. So here are the headlights and front ditch light, or I guess front headlight and ditch lights. That's what I should say. Anyway, they're very bright and they're nice and white. So you can see that looks great. Really quick, here's the horn. And there's the bell. So anyway guys, that's about it for this layout update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, for a closing shot here, I'll have the train pull away. You guys, uh, I'm sure, will will thoroughly enjoy that. Um, as I said, I'm doing live stream videos every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, so if you have the time, uh, be sure to stop in. You can ask questions as I'm here in the layout, and I'll be able to answer them on the spot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but don't worry, those live streams aren't going to replace updates like this. They're just in addition to everything that I already do. Um, so... Anyway, hopefully we'll get some use out of those, and I'll have plenty more videos soon as I continue to finish some scenery, um, and since I do have a new locomotive here, I have a bit of motivation to do a, a fun little rail fanning video, and we should be able to do some helper operations up to the top of the grade now. So, as always guys, thank you so much for watching, uh, be sure to stay tuned, and I will see you next time.